My name is Julie Savage. I'm a emeritus professor at Colorado State University. And my main interest has been in the general field of ecology, but I've studied brown tree snakes for over 30 years, uh, uh, in particular in relation to their introduction to Guam and how they devastated the birds on Guam. Brown tree snakes were accidentally introduced to Guam, probably in the late 1940s, maybe early 1950s. And shortly thereafter, bird populations started to decline on the island. Pretty much most of the native forest birds are gone now from Guam. There's a relatively small population of Micronesian starlings, but they're primarily located in the far north of the island. And there's a lot of interest in this species because it eats fruit and seeds, among other things, but it's one of the only potential seed dispersers left on the island. So it could be really important in helping maintain Guam's forests. And that's where we first got involved. All of a sudden, they saw a snake do something very different. And it basically let go of the more narrow pole with its tail, and it wrapped its body around the metal cylinder, and then basically started to wiggle its way up. I had never seen a snake do something like this. I have studied this snake for over 30 years, and yet we only just discovered this new type of locomotion that this snake could do. So I think it really reminds us how little we actually know about species. So uh, I contacted Bruce Jane at University of Cincinnati, who has spent a good portion of his career working on snake locomotion. And we sent him the video uh, to see what he thought. And I'm sure that he'll tell you that uh, he was amazed. Yes, it's an understatement to say that I was surprised. I was just shocked because I have spent so many years studying the locomotion of snakes. Uh, that has included some observations in the field. Uh, that has included laboratory experiments. And I confess I'm a bit of a nature show junkie. So I'm always keeping my eyes out for interesting things that snakes do when I watch nature shows. So with all of that cumulative experience, although I've seen many different ways that snakes climb and hundreds of species of snakes are very good at climbing trees, I never saw anything remotely like this. So right away, we knew something very interesting was going on without a doubt, but it did take a little while to iron out some of the details of how they were pulling this feet off. I wouldn't be at all surprised if we have uh, yet more, many, many interesting um, behaviors that are discovered. And uh, with respect to snakes, there are over uh, 3,500 living species of snakes. So it's very important that folks realize that uh, we've barely scratched the diversity of snakes that exist and they do do many many different things it's very clear not all snakes are created equal <laughs> With this new knowledge of lasso locomotion and also their ability to bridge gaps and so forth, uh, we can predict now circular structures that brown tree snakes couldn't readily climb and thus where it would be a good place to put a birdhouse. So Tom Seibert and I actually worked on a inverted cone shaped like a uh, ice cream cone 
that is narrow at the base and flares out and thus the snake has to constantly rearrange its body as it ascends and that makes it very difficult for it to use lasso locomotion. Understanding this type of locomotion certainly can help us protect vulnerable infrastructure such as uh, electrical substations and power poles and also hopefully help us expand the population of Micronesian starlings using baffles that snakes wouldn't be able to ascend. We just need to design them a little differently.